Today's sermon by Robert Burney is titled, A Higher Power of My Own Understanding. Today's sermon addresses the following of the UU7 principles. We affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person. We affirm and promote justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. And we affirm and promote acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations. Robert Burney is a pioneer in the area of codependency recovery, inner child healing. His work has been compared to John Bradshaw's, except much more spiritual, and described as taking inner child healing to a new level. His first book, Codependence, The Dance of Wounded Souls, which was first presented as a talk at the Pewter Plow Playhouse in Cambria in June of 1991, has been called one of the truly transformational works of our time. In it, he combines 12-step recovery principles, metaphysical truth, and Native American spirituality with quantum physics and molecular biology in presenting his belief that we are all connected, we are all extensions of the divine, and that ultimately, love is our true essence. Robert Burney. Thank you, Diane. My name is Robert Burney, and I am a recovering alcoholic and addict who's been clean and sober since June, January 3rd, 1984. And uh, I mentioned that because I'm gonna be talking today about a higher power of my own understanding. And that's a concept co that comes out of the 12-step recovery movement. And it's one that I thought, think saved my life. When I first got into recovery, I realized my, my theme song had been for many years, Desperado. You know, it's, you, your prison is walking through the world all alone, come down off your fence and let somebody love you before it's too late. And in, when I was in, in treatment getting sober, I, I adapted the rose as, as, my, uh, as my new theme song in recovery. Because I had experienced, you know, love as all those things, the razor and the, and the blood and all that. And I got a message when I was in treatment that maybe I was, you know, the seed that needed this, the light to grow. So uh, when I first got into recovery, I wouldn't even say the word God. I was raised in a shaming, shame-based religion that taught me that I was going to burn in hell forever if I even thought about sex. I didn't even have to do anything to go to hell. I just had to think the wrong thoughts and I'd go to hell. So I threw that, I said, said in the quote in there, <coughs> excuse me, I threw that concept of God and that religious stuff out when I was in my late teens and, and thought they didn't have anything to do with me anymore. So I, I wasn't even, I, I was, didn't even, the concept of God didn't really have any place in my life. Although in my middle twenties, I was in, I had some experiences with Native Americans and I, I really enjoyed the concept of a great spirit. It was, you know, the great spirit whose energy is present in everyone and everything. So I could, I, I liked that concept, but it really didn't have anything to do with my life, you know? And so when I got into recovery, I wouldn't say the word God, I would say the great spirit, or I would say the force is with me because that always resonated with me from the first Star Wars movie. But I didn't want to say, well, you know, I, that I wouldn't say the word God because that was such a loaded word for me. <laughs> and what they told me in 12 Step Recovery is that I could have a higher power of my own understanding, that I didn't have to accept anybody else's version of God, anybody else's definition of God. And that's really what I believe saved my life. If I had had to accept the, the God I learned about in childhood, I don't know that I would have stayed sober. But but what they, when they told me I could have my own relationship with a higher power of my own understanding, I could have a personal intimate relationship myself, it started me on a spiritual quest to figure out how there could possibly be a loving higher power in the universe. You know? So I studied uh, theology and mythology and metaphysics and occult and eventually quantum physics and molecular biology. But the, a real turning point came for me, a real milestone came 
about two weeks short of two years in recovery. I'd been uh, clean and sober for almost two years. My life was so much better than it had been, but I still wanted to die some days and I still had pain. I didn't know where it was coming from and I still didn't know, have any idea how to do a romantic relationship. So that day I got to thinking about the whole concept of a higher power. And I think I did some writing and I came down to realizing that in, in my perspective, there was only so many choices available. If God was judgmental and punishing, then I don't want to play. If there is no God and there's no meaning and purpose to all this, then it's stupid and I don't want to play. So it came down to the only thing that made sense to me, the thing that resonated on some level, that made it seem like life was worth living, is that if there's a higher power, it needs to be a higher power that is so powerful that everything happens for a reason as there are no accidents or coincidences or mistakes, that everything was unfolding perfectly according to some cosmic perspective, some divine plan that I don't understand most of the time. And so I started working on, I, I made a choice that day to make that the foundation of my spiritual belief system. And I had some little sayings that I, I used to try to help me in, in owning that spiritual belief system. And uh, I don't think I knew actually what I was doing at the time, but what I was doing was I was changing my relationship with life away from seeing it as a test that I could fail, which is what I got taught in childhood, to starting seeing it as an unfolding gro growth process, as a spiritual lesson plan. And so one of the, the main sayings was, I don't have any problems, I have opportunities for growth. I had always, reacted to life events as if they were personal punishment aimed at me for being imperfect at me for being a sinner and, a, and shameful and so i'd always reacted to life events you know car breakdown or losing a job or relationship ending or just any kind of traumatic life events as if it was personal punishment that was aimed at me i felt like a victim you know and um by starting to say i don't have any problems i have opportunities for growth what that helped me to do is start changing my relationship with life because in order to start looking for the opportunities for growth, I had to start looking for the silver lining to things. And what I realized is that, that there's multiple, life is paradoxical because there's multiple levels to everything. And that's why we have paradoxical sayings like every cloud has a silver lining, it's always darkest before the dawn. The one that really helped me was one I found in a book when I was three months over a book, a book I found in a grocery store. It was a book called Illusions by a guy named Richard Bach. And the, 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 uh, the quotes that really helped me was one that said, basically the, the, what a caterpillar calls the end of the world, God calls a butterfly. And uh, I felt like quitting drinking was the end of the world. So it was really an app for me. But what I did is I start, by starting to look for the silver lining to things, I started changing how I was responding to life instead of just reacting out of the old wounds and the old tapes. And the time when I really saw how much I changed my relationship with life was, uh, was a couple of years into recovery when one day, when I, my car broke down one day and my response to it was, Boy, I'm glad it happened here in town instead of over there in the hills in the fog where I was this morning. You know, because I just come over, I was in a Tascadero when the car broke down, and I just come over 46 in that fog that was so thick I almost ran into the back of a PG and E truck. And I, I was really grateful that I broke down. My first response was I was really grateful I broke down in town. Because you know, the truth the reality, I, I came to understand that the reality is no matter where your car breaks down, it could break down, it, it could have broken down at a worse place in a worse time. I just uh, posted a quote from an old uh, newsletter yesterday on Facebook where I was talking about all the lessons I've learned from cars breaking down. <laughs> and I, I I I mentioned that I I still, you know, I had a car at that time that wasn't very reliable. And I, I mentioned how I I learned to pray every time I left town, even if I was just going down to Morro Bay to get something, that I pray for a successful journey, knowing that my definition of a successful journey was to get down there and back safely, whereas my higher power's definition of a successful journey might include a breakdown, and that I had to need to accept that if it happened and then make the best choices for myself instead of being the victim of what, what life was presenting. And it was just really important for me <laughs> I, uh, somebody, as I was working on changing my relationship with myself, somebody told me a joke at one point. 
And the joke was, what's the difference between a neurotic and a psychotic? And when I tell a joke, usually I, use, I say, what's the difference between most of us codependents and the really crazy people? So the really crazy people, the people who are schizophrenic, people who are psychotic, will tell you that true two plus two equals five and really believe it. A codependent knows it's four and can't stand it. And what that made me realize is I, that's how I was relating to life. I could see how life was and I couldn't stand it because it wasn't fair and it wasn't just and people weren't nice and we destroying the planet we live on. I got all this war and violence and it shouldn't be this way. Well, that just made me a victim. I was being a victim of reality and that wasn't serving me. What I needed to do is learn to accept reality as it is, which doesn't mean I have to like it. I just need to see reality as clearly as possible and then I can make the best choices for myself given reality is what it is. And so it was really start a, a process of getting, stopping buying in to being the victim because I'd always felt like the victim, like I was trapped, like I didn't have any choices. I really needed to own that I had choices in my life and that uh, I needed to start seeing that the things that happened in my life were opportunities for growth. And it was part of the spiritual lesson plan. And one of the things that also made me realize is that everybody that comes into my life is a teacher. And I like the nice teachers better than the jerks. But the jerks are the ones that forced me to start standing up and protecting myself and learning how to have boundaries and taking care of myself. If nobody had ever been a jerk to me, I would have never had to learn to protect myself and stand up for myself. So even as someone was victimizing me, they were still a teacher on my spiritual path. Everything that happens in my life is part of my lesson plan. And so, and what I was doing, like I said, I, I didn't even realize what I was doing at the time, but I was changing my relationship with life away from seeing it as a test I could fail to starting to see it as an unfolding growth process. And I also was guided, my intuitive guidance had me working on integrating that spiritual belief into my emotional relationship with life, which is a real key. I, I realized that, you know, it, it doesn't matter how much intellectual knowledge I have or how many spiritual experiences I have, if I haven't integrated it into my emotional relationship with life, then I'm still going to react to the old wounds and the old tapes, especially in the, in the relationships where my heart's involved. And that I needed to learn to integrate that. And so what I do is, as I, if I was feeling bad and things were looking bad, I would tell myself, everything's going to be okay. There is a plan unfolding. This too shall pass. More will be revealed. And I talk myself down from the fear. Because what I realize is my ego can ramp me up on that fear until I'm on a ledge ready to jump. And part of the, part of the reason for that is I believe, you know, is I, well, I believe that, you know, part of the purpose of 12-step recovery is to learn to live the serenity prayer in our life. I believe that the serenity prayer is a mystical formula for how to do life successfully. And what I came to realize is I had been programmed growing up to live the serenity prayer backwards. That I thought I got the message I should be in control of things I can't control like other people and life. And I did not get taught any effective way to take control of what I can control because I learned to try to control myself with shame and judgment and fear. And when I'm shaming and judging myself, that's when the rebel in me reacts with what I call the battle crab codependence, which is I'll show you, I'll get me. So somebody hurts me, then I do something to hurt myself because I go to one of my old tools for going unconscious and nurturing myself like alcohol or drugs or food or whatever it is. And so I hurt myself because somebody hurt me. And being part of what I need to learn in recovery is to stop taking other people's behavior personally because they're just reacting to their wounds. They, don't, they can't really even see me. And so it was really important for me to start, you know, talking myself down from that fear. And I just realized that I was taking life way too seriously and way too personally. You know, when you get taught as a child that you're going to burn hell forever if you do it wrong, that's pretty serious and pretty personal, you know. But so I learned to stop taking it so personally and so seriously. I, need, I realized I need to lighten up. When I first got into recovery, there, they, I, everything was a big deal to me. I kept being told there's no big deals, you know, everything is just part of the process. And so um, I had to lighten up and I saw a quote from Mother Teresa one time. She said, I know the Lord never gives me more than I can handle. I just wish she didn't have so much confidence in me sometimes. You know? And so when I had a lot of fur, so, so one, of the, one of the sayings I had for myself to help me lighten up was that when it feels like crap, that means I'm being fertilized to help me grow. You know? So when I was feeling a lot of crap in my life, that meant my higher power had a lot of, a lot of confidence in me. And so the, the, 
was just so important for me to stop taking lifestyle personally so seriously and start seeing the life events as opportunities for growth, start seeing other people as teachers. And the thing that uh, was so power, so important for me in this process was that choosing to believe that everything happens for a reason, it, that the higher power is so powerful that everything happens for a reason, means to me that I don't have the power to script the plan. I believe that, you know, that, and I'll, I talk in my book about the laws of energy interaction that, that dictate our behavior, but I believe that my higher power, the universe has the power to get me where I'm supposed to be, when I'm supposed to get there. My choice, I have, I have choices, and my choice is, do I follow the carrots or wait for the stick? You know, the universe has the power to get me where I'm supposed to go, and uh, that uh, I, my choice is, do I follow the carrots to get there or wait for the stick? So by paying attention and being conscious and looking for the messages and following where I'm led, that, that's a lot easier and more enjoyable for me than, uh, than waiting for the universe to use the stick on me. And so I just found it was just changed my life and helped me to start learning to really relax and enjoy life, to choose to believe that there's a higher power that's on my side, that the force is with me. And there was one time I was, somebody had called me about uh, doing some phone counseling and, and this person was really, really cynical and really bitter and nothing that she'd ever tried had worked. And I was telling her how important I thought it was to choose to believe that there is a loving force on her side, that there's a loving higher power. And what she said was, but that's just a crutch, you're just playing mind games with yourself. And my response was, so what, it works. Because that's the bottom line, is it works to make life easier and more enjoyable for me to choose to believe that there's a higher power on my side. And the next thing I said to her is, if God's judgmental and punishing, I'll find out soon enough why let it ruin my day to day. You know? So it's just, we want. I believe that the purpose of being here is for us to, to learn to be in the moment and to, to relax and enjoy it. It's, it's a journey that we're, there's no destination you get to, it's a journey and we want to learn to enjoy the journey. And the first time when somebody said to me, the first time somebody said to me, you're a spiritual being having a human experience, my first reaction was anger. And my first thought was that means I got to be out among them. And what I realized is that when they said that, I, I knew immediately that that was the truth. And I knew that meant I wasn't supposed to go up on a mountain and meditate my way to God, that I was supposed to learn to interact with other human beings. If I'm a spiritual being having a human experience, I'm not here to get spiritual. I'm here to bring, access that spirituality and bring it into my human relationships. And so that's my higher power of my own understanding. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. That covered, <clears throat> that covered a lot of information, and I just wanted to say that I really appreciated um, the uh, quote, which was, um, everyone who comes into my life is a teacher. Normally, at this time, we receive offerings from our congregants. However, due to the virtual format of this service, we invite you to make your offering in one of the met methods shown on the slideshow. Enlarge the slideshow tile to see how to do this. These methods will also be posted in the newsletter and on the UUCC website itself. Please make note of this and remember that our congregation is entirely self-governed by the democratic process. One of the privileges of our free choice, free church tradition is to provide all of the financial support for our many ministries from among ourselves. Generosity, therefore, is one of the spiritual values we recognize as central to our personal and our institutional well-being. You are now invited to participate in the blessing of giving by sending us an offering. Thank you.